Okay, hello everyone. Uh, Mr. Lau here again. So today I will go through a lecture on uh, chapter three, all right, which is on the pressure and pressure measurement. All right, so pressure is actually a property that forms a very essential part of thermal fluid. All right, the pressure itself basically tells us how much force this uh, fluid is exerting on its surrounding per unit area. Okay, so that is actually the fundamental definition of pressure. All right, so what are the objectives for this uh, chapter itself? Okay, firstly, is of course to define the fluid density, specific weight, and specific gravity. All right, these three terms has actually been discussed before in chapter one. Okay, so density, uh, just to recap, is represented by rho, specific weight is omega, specific weight is also given by rho g, or you can write it as weight over volume. All right, and your specific gravity is given by Sg, and the formula wise is actually the density of your fluid divided by the density of water at four degrees C. Okay, which essentially is 1000. All right, so these are properties that we'll, we will use, okay, to actually calculate pressure later on. All right. Okay, the second objective is to define pressure in density and what is pressure heat. Okay, and then to study different types of pressure measurement techniques. Okay, what are the tools or what are the equipments that we can use to actually measure pressure? All right. Okay. And lastly, uh, yep, it's the same thing, which is to measure the different, to study the different types of pressure instruments. All right. So let's move on. Okay, so uh, what are the types of pressure that we, we, we commonly encounter? Okay, so first we will start off with something uh, that is universal, that is global. Okay, something that we call the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so this pressure itself is actually the pressure exerted by the air, okay, that surrounds the earth. Okay, basically you can imagine it as the air that is on top of us. So if you are standing on the surface of the earth, Okay, whatever that is on top, the air, okay, is actually exerting its weight upon us. All right, and this, we will call it the atmospheric pressure. All right, so the, uh, the typical value that we will use, okay, which is at sea level, okay, which is our common reference, is that the pressure at sea level is actually 101.325 kilopascal. Oh or uh, another unit for it is bar, which is one bar. Okay, can. So next, how about the absolute pressure? So the absolute pressure, okay, is defined as the pressure measured above the absolute zero pressure. Okay, which is the perfect value, perfect vacuum. Okay, essentially, the what is the meaning of uh, absolute pressure? Absolute pressure, okay, PABS, is actually the actual pressure itself. Lah. All right. The actual pressure of your fluid or your gas itself. All right, so this is what it's trying to say. Okay, next we also have something called the gauge pressure. All right, so the gauge pressure, all right, is actually the pressure, all right, that is measured by your instrument. Okay, with respect to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so the formula that we have here is P absolute is equals to PATM plus gauge. All right, can. Okay. So typically your instrument will actually measure the P gauge. All right, so if you want to calculate your P absolute, okay, you must use the P gauge plus your PATM. Okay, can. Okay. So um, don't, don't need to read too much into definitions for B and C. Okay, basically absolute pressure is just saying that it is the pressure of your fluid itself. Okay, the actual, the actual pressure. All right. Then the gauge pressure is the pressure measured by your instrument. So to get back your absolute pressure, you got to add it to the atmospheric pressure. All right. So another thing is actually called the vacuum pressure. Okay, we will encounter this later part. Okay, vacuum pressure is actually the negative pressure or the pressure below 
the atmosphere. Okay, so today, all right, if today uh, you, you have your vacuum pressure, okay, vacuum pressure can be negative. Okay, the keyword here is negative. Okay, so it, it can be things like your P, uh, I'll use bar, okay, your P vacuum is actually maybe negative 0 0.3 bar. Okay, so to a lot of people who don't who didn't study thermal fluid, okay, a negative pressure doesn't really make sense. Okay, uh, because pressure is actually force over area, and force has actually a direction. Alright, so the force itself has a direction, which is always uh, you can imagine it as down acting. So to a lot of people, pressure is actually a positive uh, quantity. Yes, you are right. Pressure is actually a positive quantity, but that is the absolute pressure. That means the absolute pressure or the actual pressure of certain uh, of something, okay, the actual pressure of something must always be positive. So maybe we can say that the pressure of oxygen, the pressure of carbon dioxide, uh, the pressure exerted by this uh, hydraulic fluid, it must always be positive. But what we are saying here is something we call the vacuum pressure. So vacuum pressure, let's go back to this example, is it can be negative. But how come it can be negative? Because you see, if we use back this formula, all right, P absolute, okay, is actually P ATM, which is one bar, minus away the P vacuum, which is 0 0.3. So at the end of the day, it gives me 0 0.7 bar. So the absolute still remains as positive, all right? But the vacuum, okay, the P vacuum is negative, meaning to say that with respect to the atmosphere, okay, my current pressure is lower than it by 0 0.3 bar. Okay, can? So abs the vacuum pressure can be negative, understand? Okay, so in, in this essence, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to compare. All right, so gauge pressure is usually the pressure that is above the atmosphere. So for example, the gauge measures a gauge pressure of 0.3 bar. So if the gauge pressures measures a pressure of 0.3 bar, the absolute pressure will be 1 plus 0.3, which is 1.3 bar. On the other hand, if your pressure is lower, that means you are, you, are, you are under a scenario of partial vacuum, then it can be negative. So the partial vacuum pressure, okay, is maybe a negative 0.3 bar. So to get back the absolute, it will be 1 minus 0.3, which is 0 0.7 bar. All right. So ultimately, is it, um, the general idea is correct. The general idea is that the absolute pressure must be positive. Okay, the absolute pressure must be positive. The actual pressure must always be positive. But if we are trying to write down something that is relative, okay, like gauge or vacuum, vacuum pressure particularly, then it can be negative. All right, can? Okay, let's move on. So there's actually a, a, a relationship between pressure and depth. All right, so we, we, we can quickly define it. All right, so using this, using this very simple example over here, okay, whereby uh, water is actually acting on this cross-sectional area, okay, at the bottom, okay. Also, the, the weight of the water is actually acting on the bottom, okay, the cross-sectional area is A. All right, so what is the weight of the fluid in this case? Okay, the weight of the fluid, all right, can be calculated by your specific weight multiplied by the volume of fluid, which is rho g times ah. Okay, can so, uh, or if you are not too familiar with this, okay, the weight of fluid is actually you can we can write it as the mass times g. All right, and mass in this case will be density times volume times g. All right, which ends up giving you rho g times v. Okay, so this is what uh, this formula is trying to do here. 
So it's rho g times v. So rho g will be the density of the water. G will be 9.81. And volume, in this case, is the volume of this uh, cylinder here, the full volume. Okay, and the full volume can be obtained by using the cross-sectional area multiplied by the height. Okay, then we will apply the uh, pressure formula, which is for force over area. Okay, can so if you use what we have derived there divided by area, you realize that the A can cancel out. All right, so in the end, pressure is only given by rho g h. All right, can or some of you might want to write it as omega h, but by omega is rho g. Omega is your specific weight. All right, so you can actually see that pressure is uh, independent of the area. All right. Instead, pressure is only dependent on the depth. Okay, it doesn't matter how big the surface area is acting on or how narrow the surface area is acting on. Okay, pressure at the same depth must be the same. Okay, that is what, what we are trying to, to talk about. Okay, I believe some of you might, might remember this uh, very simple elementary question whereby we have uh, something like this. No. So the, the, the water is actually, there's water inside here. So no matter what, okay, the pressure, let's say at the same level, must always be the same. Okay, the pressure at the same level must always be the same. Okay, irregardless of the shape or the cross-sectional area, uh, because, okay, the pressure itself is only dependent on the depth. Okay, can. All right, so let's go through a very quick example over here. A diver is working on a depth of 18 meters below the surface of the sea. How much greater is the pressure at this depth than at the surface? All right, density of seawater is 1020. Okay, can so uh, actually let me just draw a quick schematic. If I have a guy here under the water level, okay, so this is your di depth h. So what we are actually calculating here, rho g h, okay, 1020 is the density of seawater, 9.81 times 18, 180. Okay, what we are actually truly calculating here is actually your p gauge, 180. All right, uh, this itself is the pressure due to this height of fluid. We have not included the atmosphere yet. Okay, Ken, so this is how we calculate for this question because the question is asking how much greater compared to at the surface. All right, so we, we want the delta, we want the difference. Okay, so the P gauge today, all right, is 180. So meaning to say, please be careful, whatever that we, derived just now, it only enables you to calculate p gauge. Rho g h enables you to calculate p gauge. All right. Okay, so uh, of course, we, we need to move in deeper. All right. Uh, in the sense that we must understand that usually in the industry, we seldom call upon pressure as pressure. Okay, we, we don't go around talk, telling people one bar, two bar, one atmosphere, 10 kilopascal, etc., etc. Instead, we usually relate pressure as a form of heat. Okay, the units here is in terms of meter. Okay, or some, some of you might prefer to understand this as pressure height. Okay, so from how, how do we how do we derive this formula is actually from our p equals to rho g h. We do a rearrangement, okay, p over rho g. So essentially, we will associate the pressure with height. All right, can. So the height here is referred to as pressure height. Okay, can. So if let's say today we have a point, okay, we say that this point has pressure that is equivalent to H meters of mercury. Okay, at this point, uh, 
this point here, the pressure is equivalent to H meters of mercury. We, we don't, we don't, we don't use, quantify it with Pascal. We don't quantify it bar. We don't say that all oh, the pressure here is one bar or the pressure here is 1000 Pascal. No, instead we say that the pressure at this point is H meters of mercury. Meaning to say what? Meaning to say, if we were to pretend to superimpose something, okay, that means if you impose a, a, a tube here, if we impose a tube here, an imaginary tube, okay, and if we fill it up with mercury, okay, if we fill it up here with mercury, okay, this, the point here is experiencing a pressure equivalent to H meters of mercury. That means it's equivalent to taking H meters of mercury and then putting it on top of this point. All right, Ken. So instead of talking about pressure, usually we, we will talk about uh, pressure in terms of height. We associate with height. It also serves as a better comparison. So if let's say we, we, we can easily compare this point here. So if let's say this is equivalent to three, oops, let me go back. Okay, so let's say we, 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 we say that here is three, three meters of mercury. So we have another point, okay? We say that at this point it's actually five meters of mercury. So you, you can actually see that it serves as a very easy comparison. Of course, the pressure here is higher because it's equivalent to five meters of mercury. So five and three is a, a bet, it provides an easier comparison instead of uh, talking about the absolute pressure itself. Well, uh, 10,950 Pascal compared to 9,850 Pascal. Uh, by the time we compare these two numbers, uh, it's going to be uh, too slow, all right? Versus we say that, oh, five meters of mercury versus three meters of mercury. So five meters of mercury, of course, it definitely has a higher pressure. All right, Ken? Okay, so ho hopefully you get my point here. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so using this example, we illustrate. Okay, so if we have a small object, located in the sea and is subjected to a gauge pressure of 100 kilopascal. If the density is 1020, express the pressure in terms of seawater head. Okay, so we apply the formula. So the, the gauge pressure here is 100,000 divided by density of water divided by 9.1. Okay, it gives you 9.99 meters of seawater. That means the pressure at that point is equivalent to 9.99 meters of seawater. All right. So of course we can do it the other way around. Uh, an object is subjected to a pressure head of 1.2 meters of oil. Calculate the gauge pressure on the object. Also, if we are given the head, we can back calculate the gauge pressure by using back the P equals to rho G H. So of course, uh, because it's 1.2 meters of oil, so therefore the density, you must use that of oil. You cannot just choose any density because I'm saying that the pressure there is equivalent to 1.2 meters of oil. Therefore, the density must be oil times 9.81 times the height. All right, and this gives us uh, this fairly ugly number, okay, which is uh, 9417.6 Pascal. Okay, so you must be able to convert back and fro. Okay, so if you are given if you are given the gauge pressure, you must be able to convert into head. Oh, alternatively, if you are given the head, you must be able to convert into the absolute or the gauge pressure. All right. Okay, Ken. So uh, that's all for the introduction for pressure. Okay. So essentially, what we have what we have said up to now is that. Gauge pressure can be calculated by rho GH, and it will be in our interest to associate pressure with head. Okay. And, and if you want to get the absolute pressure, you must use the gauge pressure plus our atmospheric pressure. All right. So next, we will move on to pressure measurement. 
Okay, so how do we actually measure pressure? So we, there's a couple of device here. The first one that we're going to look at is actually your mercury barometer. Okay, the setup is fairly simple. Basically, we have a basin here. Uh, and this is a sort of an inverted test tube. Okay, and as the name implies, mercury inside is actually mercury. All right, Ken. So uh, as we invert the tube, okay, the mercury will rise up to a level of H. Okay, Ken. So uh, using one very important concept, which I already mentioned just now. Okay, Ken, I'm going to write it here. Pressure at the same depth must have the same value. Okay, because pressure is only depth dependent. Okay, therefore, uh, today, if we, if we want, we can actually do a comparison. For this case, we can say that this point must be the same pressure as this point. Okay, can so at this point, because it's exposed to the atmosphere, so this is actually your PATM. And at this point is your PA. So actually, if you want to understand this further, we should start off with PATM equals to PA. Okay, that means the atmosphere pressure, which is at this point, must be the same as PA because of the fact that they are at the same height, the same level. Okay, Ken. And then how do we calculate PA? PA can calculate by just now the formula that we have done, which is rho G H. And because it's mercury, so it's rho M. The density must be mercury times the height of the mercury. Therefore, we land ourselves with this final equation. All right. So this mercury barometer basically tells us the atmospheric pressure. Okay, Ken. And of course, uh, another important point here is that this section must be a perfect or close to perfect vacuum. Okay, Ken. What was the reason? Okay, the reason is very simple. Uh, because if this is the perfect vacuum, that means PA, okay, PA over here, it will be slow, solely due to the weight of H meters of mercury. Okay, okay. So only when the top part is a perfect vacuum, then PA is solely due to the weight of the mercury. If there was some kind of air inside here, then the PA measurement will be inaccurate because PA will then be the pressure due to this uh, redundant air plus the height. Okay, but that is not, not what we want. All right, we just want the PA in terms of the height or the weight of this mercury. Okay, cool. so this is the importance of this uh, perfect vacuum that we should have on top. All right. Okay, let's move on. So an example. So if the mercury barometer gives you a reading of 765, what is the atmospheric pressure? Okay, we apply the formula, very simple. All right, so we must use the density of mercury times 9.1 times your 0.765. Okay, Ken, so this will give you this very big number. So therefore, the PATM is 102 kilopascal. All right, Ken, so this is the function of a mercury barometer. Okay, of course, there's a few other uh, types of barometer that we have here. Okay, but all this we'll just discuss in terms of theory. Okay, it's not required for the exams, but it's just for general knowledge. Okay, the first one here, we have the aneroid barometer. Okay, the concept is almost similar to just now that barometer. Okay, so basically we have a partial vacuum here. 
all right can so the pressure x okay on this so-called corrugated metal lead box okay so the the pressure the outside pressure will squeeze this box and this squeezing of this box okay will cause some uh, reaction to this rack and pinion component so once there is a movement all right you'll cause this pinion which is attached to this needle to move all right and then this will read the pressure so this squeezing is due to whatever pressure that you have outside so this squeezing will result in the movement of the rack and then the pinion which then gives you some kind of reading here all right so this reading will indicate what is your pressure all right of course uh for this thing to work the this meter or this dial must be calibrated okay okay so before you use it for the actual uh application you must first calibrate it meaning to say that maybe uh, pressure one bar uh, the reading here should show one pressure two bar the reading here should show two three bar the reading the reading here should show three so this is the process of calibration so once you have all this calibrated that means we associate the gauge reading one with one bar two with two bar three to three bar then we can bring it to outside so if let's say when during the uh, industrial application or whatever okay the the gauge reading shows you maybe uh, 2.5 Okay, the reading is 2.5. So based on your calibration, you can say that, ah, okay, maybe this is 2.5 bar. All right, okay. Okay, so this is a, a general a general brief idea of what is the calibration process. Okay, next, uh, of course, it's another one, which is a Bowden gauge. Okay, concept is very simple. Okay, we have this uh, stem here, which is connected to your pressure source. All right, can okay. so, this stem all right uh is connected to this thing called the Borden tube okay this part here oops sorry let me just move forward is connected to this Borden tube and then connected to this mechanical linkage which moves this uh, needle so idea is the same okay when whatever pressure that is exerted here will cause the movement of this uh Borden tube which then causes the movement of the linkage and this linkage will move the needle. So of course, the pressure scale must also be calibrated. Okay, okay. so we are trying to associate the pressure with a certain movement. So by looking at this movement, we can know what is the pressure. So that is the basic principle of uh, pressure measurement. Okay, so moving on, okay, other than barometers, we have another thing called the manometers. Okay, can so this over here what we see uh, is actually a, a simple pressure tube. Okay, it's nothing like it's just a pipe. You can see it's just a pipe here, and then I connect an open tube to it. All right, can. So if you look at this, the pressure at point A, which is this point, pressure at point A. Okay, the gauge pressure specifically is due to the height of this liquid. So we can write it as rho g h1. Okay, same thing. The gauge pressure at point B, okay, will be written as rho g h2 because this height here is h2. All right. Okay. So next, that's it. That is the simple concept of a uh, manometer. So essentially. All right, if we, but just by connecting a tube, okay, to a pipe, okay, the water will, will rise up to a certain height. Okay, so this height H2 will indicate the pressure at point B. All right, can, so in this case, the pressure at point B can be calculated by rho G H2. All right, can, and again, uh, I need to draw your attention to the fact that what we are measuring here, okay, yes, it is called the gauge pressure or another name for it is actually, we are measuring actually the static pressure. 
Okay, this we will touch on it later part. All right, because uh, actually the total pressure consists of two parts. One is the static part and the other one is the dynamic part. Okay, so what we are actually measuring here is actually called the static pressure. Why static? Because this column of fluid is not moving. Okay, we are trying to measure the static pressure at point B. Okay, so a simple example, we have a pressure tube that is used to measure the pressure of oil. So when we connect this tube here, the oil actually rises up to 1.2 meters. So what is the gauge pressure at this point, point A? Okay, can so simply use rho GH. So rho is your density of your fluid, which is 640. G is 9.1, H is 1.2 meters. So you get the gauge pressure at point A. All right, so it's just simply connecting an open tube to it. So whatever height that it raises up to, that will be your gauge pressure, okay? Which is the static component of A. Okay, of course, uh, we, we will not just simply use an open tube. Okay, Ken, uh, what, we, what we usually do is actually we employ this thing called the U-tube manometer. Okay, Ken. So this U-tube manometer, uh, it looks something like this. Okay, this is your pipe. Okay, this is the uh, side view la, or the cross-sectional view of your pipe. Okay, can so instead of just connecting to open tube, we, we connect it to a U-shaped manometer. All right, can so this U-shaped manometer is filled with uh, fluid. It can be anything, but in this case, it's mercury. All right, so we, how do we, how do we, our objective here is to actually measure PA. What is the static pressure of A? Okay, so how can we do it? Okay, firstly, uh, we can first equate PB. How do we equate PB? PB is the pressure at B. The pressure at B basically, uh, based on the pressure concept, is everything that is above it. So what is above B? Above B is A. So A, PA is at this height. Okay, whatever that is along this height is PA because as I would say, pressure is dependent on that. So if this point here is PA, this point here must also be PA. So PB is PA plus the weight of this H1. All right, so PA plus rho g h1 okay this will give you your pb so pb i say again is whatever that is on top of it what is on top of it pa plus rho g h1 similarly uh the gauge pressure on the right hand side okay is pc why are we taking pc later on we'll explain it so the gauge pressure of pc is only due to H2, okay, which is your rho G H2. All right, Ken, uh, we are not concerned with the atmosphere, okay, Ken, because we just want to measure the gauge pressure. So it's only rho G H2. And then using the same concept, the water pressure or the pressure at the same height must be the same. Therefore, we can write PB is equals to PC. All right. So PB is this. PC is this. Rearrange it. PA will be basically rho m g h two minus rho g h one. Take note of the difference in the rho here. Okay, because uh look back at our PB equation, okay, PB, the H1 component is due to the liquid that we have in the pipe. Okay, on the other hand, the PC component, H2, 
the H2 is actually due to the mercury. So therefore, Pa is rho MgH2 minus rho GH1. The two rows are different. This is the mercury rho, and this is the fluid rho. Okay, can so by looking at the height difference, okay, we can actually measure the Pa value. All right, can. Okay, so let's go through this simple example, 4.5. A mercury U-tube manometer is used to measure the pressure of water in a pipe as shown in the figure. Specific gravity of mercury is 13.6. Okay, uh, take note, specific gravity of mercury is 13.6, meaning to say that the density of mercury, okay, uh, if you want to work it out, it's actually Sg of the mercury times 1000. So it's 13600, okay? Kg per meter cube. So part A, what is the gauge pressure at point A? So how do we calculate the gauge pressure at point A? Okay, uh, what I hope for most students to do is don't go and memorize. Try not to memorize uh, this part. Okay, because sometimes the setup is different. Okay, so what we what we hope students will do is to apply the concept. Okay, every time we see a, a, a question. Okay, so how do we get point PA? So the fundamental concept is that we need to apply pressure at B must be equal to pressure at C. So uh, I will not refer to the answer first. Let me just write down. So the first thing that you need to determine is that PB is equal to PC. This is always the way you start. Don't go and memorize, don't go and do whatsoever. You must always apply this fundamental concept. PB is equal to PC. So what is PB? PB is everything above it. So what is above PB? Above PB is PA, okay? Because pressure again at the same height must be the same. So this point is PA plus 0 0.3 meters. So PB, I can write it as PA plus the pressure due to 0 0.3 meters. So this is P 0 0.3 water. Okay. How about PC? PC, again, take note, we are only concerned with the gauge. All right. So PC is whatever that is above it. Okay. So this is actually due to P 0 0.5 mercury. All right, Ken, so we'll put in all the values. So PA plus 0 0.3 water will be rho water times G times 0 0.3 is equals to 0 0.5 mercury will be rho mercury G times 0 0.5. Okay, Ken, so therefore PA will be rho mercury G 0 0.5 minus rho water G 0 0.3. So it's actually very simple to derive on the spot. You don't have to memorize anything. Okay, all I say again, it starts off with this concept. Pressure at the same height must be of the same pressure. Okay, so let's look at the solution. So as I said, PB is equals to PC. So put in every value and you can get the gauge pressure at A. Okay, finally, to get the absolute pressure, because what we have calculated here is actually the gauge pressure. All right, so to get the absolute pressure is using PATM plus P gauge. So PATM, okay, is given by the question to be 101.3. Uh, so add it up and you can get your P absolute. Okay. Can next let's go through another example. Uh, we have a mercury U-tube manometer connected to a pipe carrying water, as shown in the figure. Specific mercury gravity of mercury is thirteen point three. So again, this tells me that the row of mercury is thirteen thousand six hundred, and density of one one thousand. What is the gauge pressure at A? All right, so we are going to do the same thing. So we are going to write PB is equals to PC because water pressure at the same height must be the same. Okay, can. So, 
we we will okay uh take note over here when we say the same height is with respect to the same reference point so the reference here okay we call it the datum okay we will discuss this a bit more later part the datum so same height means uh it's at the same height with respect to this datum okay so pb equals to pc so what is pb pb is everything above it so what is above pb above pb is pa plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.3 so PB, I can write it as PA plus P 0 0.15 water plus P 0 0.3 mercury. Okay, take note, I have to split up 0 0.15 and 0 0.3 because they are of different fluid medium. One is water, the other one is mercury. All right, can. So, PC, what is above PC? There's nothing above PC. So, it's zero. Okay. And so, PA will simply be negative of P0.15 water minus P0.3 mercury. Okay. So, the gauge pressure of PA will turn out to be negative. So, as you mentioned just now, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. All right, this is considered vacuum pressure. All right, so same thing, based on the working, we are gonna do it. Okay, so we plug in all the values and expect that the gauge pressure is negative 41.5. Okay, so this is considered vacuum pressure. It doesn't mean that the absolute is negative, it just means that it is negative 41.5 lower than the atmosphere. All right, okay. So calculate the absolute pressure at A if the barometric reading is 750. So barometric reading is 750, what does it mean? It means that if you were to put the barometer at that same location, okay, the barometer will give you a height of 750 mm. Okay, so from there, we can calculate the atmospheric pressure directly. So it's rho mgh. So 13,600 times 9.1 times your height, which is 750 mm, but please change it to SI unit, which is 0 0.75. So this here will give you your PATM. All right, so once you have your PATM, you will add up the atmosphere with the gauge and this will give you your absolute. All right. So lastly, express the gauge pressure at A as head of mercury. So we don't want to see such a big value here. Okay, instead, we want to express in terms of mercury. So to express it in terms of height, we'll use P over rho G. So P is 58.6 kilonewton, change to SI unit, divided by rho G, because we want to express in terms of mercury. So the rho we use must be the rho for mercury. G is 9.1, and you calculate it, it will be 0 0.439. So meaning to say, all right, uh, the pressure of A, which is whatever that's in this pipe, is equivalent to having 0 0.439 meters of mercury of weight handling on top. Okay, Ken? So this is it. Okay, Ken, so very simple. All right, so actually before I end my session here, Okay, there's, there's one, one thing that I, I want to emphasize on is, uh, maybe just let me draw a quick schematic here. Okay, because this, this thing maybe have, have not been highlighted yet. So this is water. Uh, maybe here. Maybe here. Okay, Ken. So what we have here is uh, three different uh, fluids. Okay, we have water inside here. Okay, we have your mercury inside here. And we have your air, which is here. Okay, so we have always been applying at this same level. We always say that A is equals to B. 
PA is equals to B, PB. Okay, and this is because of the concept that I say that pressure at the same height must be the same. Okay, and so what I've mentioned previously was only up to this point. But you might, some of you might be wondering, eh, uh, how come uh, I don't choose these two points? Maybe why don't I choose PC and D? They are also at the same height. Can I say that PC is equal to PD? The answer is no. Okay, because this statement here is still not yet complete. Okay, to refine this statement, what I must say is that pressure at the same height, the keyword, okay, the keyword within the same fluid medium, all right, must be the same value all right so what i'm highlighting here is actually an uh, additional key point okay whatever that we do okay whatever comparison that we make okay it must be within the same fluid medium i cannot do c and d because c is in the mercury d is in air all right whatever i want to compare it must be within the same fluid medium therefore i will always be picking a and b which is in the same fluid medium of mercury. All right, okay, so this is one last important concept that I would like to highlight. Okay, other than that, uh, this chapter should be quite okay. Okay, please try to go through it one more time and then attempt the tutorial. All right, so if not, uh, that's all. Thank you for your time. Okay, I'll see you again. Bye-bye.